Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday edition of the Duck Golf Show. How busy have we been with all the golf that's happened? Not very long ago, we had Blue Valley, and then we had Royal East. And coming up, we've got the Players' Championship at Serengeti. We're all very excited. I hope we're not golfed out. I don't think that's even a phrase. So we have a very, very busy show today. We've got to go through it all. Blue Valley, Royal. Um, as I mentioned, we'll preview Serengeti. And then we've got a case of the Fats vs. Mares team selection for the Classic because that's also coming up very, very soon. The days are counting down and we're on 14 days to go. As always, I'm not alone on the show. First of all, I've got everybody on the chat line watching. Thank you for watching. But we've got our guests. We've got Basil Wright. Hi, Basil. And we've got Ryan. Hi. Hi Ryan. How's it? How's it? Don't How's it, Ryan? evening off because... If you did not see, we are on again tomorrow. Hey, Basil, and tomorrow we have the Ryder Cup preview show. Yeah, the Whistling Straits. Right. We are all golf nuts, right? And what a perfect uh, time what? to come on tomorrow and discuss the Ryder Cup, the teams, the possible pairings, the golf course. It's all to talk about. So please join us tomorrow. Basil will be here. We've got Dylan De Beer coming on to share his expertise. We've got Donnie and we've got Jason Dedekind who will go through all, all that we need to know. Right, before we get started, while you guys uh, tell me how you're doing, I'm going to go through the comments and see how many people have said hello. Yeah, cool, fantastic. Uh, my day started out actually at concept. Mm -hmm. I uh, just went to go pick up my my new my new equipment from, from Donnie just to fix my shafts and my grips as uh, Donnie has been fitting my bag for the last seven years, you know, so very trustworthy with Donnie and uh, just like to also thank him. Unfortunately, he's not on the show tonight, but we will leave it at that. And uh, Ryan, how was your day besides uh, being on the show this evening? He has been very busy. I can tell you that much because a lot of events, yes. a lot of stats, a lot of handicaps. Yes, I still got to complete some handicaps and some stuff as well, yes. And we've got Friday coming along, and then we have the Classic. So, yeah, I've been busy, and then also with regular work as well. Been kept quite busy, yeah. Well, How do we say sleep is for later, eh? <laughs> I'm going to keep you even Fantastic. busier. Right, here we go. Good evening, gents, says Corbus. Come on. Welcome, Corbus. Thanks for watching. Uh, hello, everybody. Oh, look, it's Ryan. Uh, he's multitasking, as he was just saying. <laughs> there we go. Multitasking. Gerard uh, Maritz, how's it? Yellow lacquer ducks or duckies. Hello. Uh, as always, Louis Jensen. Good evening, gentlemen, and others. Paul Ricketts. Hello, Paul. Are you stiff from yesterday's action cricket, Paul? Run. You too, Basil. Run. Not really. Not really. Joke, yeah. But yes, if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. Carl Jarks. Hello, Carl. Thanks for watching. Carl will be joining us. Eddie Potsy is coming up to make a visit. Nice. So we look forward to seeing you, nice. Carl. Uh, Moneo Kelly. Hello, Monet. Um, very excited for the tour coming up. I can tell you that much. And then it keeps going. We've got Peter Zach. Evening all. We've got Robert Michael who's jumped on for a change. Hello, Robert. Hey, we've got Fats. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Fats. And, and Nancy, more. Fats. Shandon. Shandon. Good evening, legends. And there's many, many more. Billy Hall, Nick Kruger, and uh, Peter, Peter Prinsloo. And the list goes on and on and on. Barry Fenter. And on and on and on. So keep commenting and we will get you. If you have any questions for the lads or for us, then we will try to get to it. Wow. Let's start. Well, we go all the way back to Blue Valley. And what happened at Blue Valley? Well, we had a new winner in the winner's circle. We had Grant Nell coming in on minus six, 42 points, a personal best that he shot. Uh, well done to Grant. Uh, I caught up with him when he was finishing and he, had, he was very excited. But let's have a look at his handicap. Oh, not handicap, his score, starting on the 10th, um, a string of two-pointers, then a bit of a blips on the par 5, 11th, uh, 13th, and then to bring it all back, a four-point on the par 5, 18th, to turn it 20 points in contention. Moving on to the back, another birdie on the on the third, another par 5, and then a, that's a good to run, a 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then a final par on the last to take it to six under where he waited not too long because there was a couple of guys behind him that were trying to catch him but unfortunately was not able to do it so well done grant we'll hear from him shortly the results coming in second also minus three now are uh, bobby von espay fricky barnard a good round for him minus one he was in contention unfortunately a bit unlucky on the course uh he could have really um 
made a run for the top position. Ryan Esman shooting a great round. I think it was of 68 or 69 to finish at 1 under 37 points. Daniel Calden is, as always, up there. Even par for the round. Billy Hall, Gerard Gerber, Peter Prinsloo, uh, Fricky Stein, and Eervold uh, van Weyck further down. Right, so let's see what the boys had to say after the round. So Fricky, you are on minus one, tied for fourth in the top five. How are you feeling? Feeling like it. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, had a couple of putts and shots out there that uh, I just didn't work. Uh, lost my ball on one of the holes and blacked out. Just couldn't go back. But yeah, it was like a game. And talk me through your round. It was like I hit more fairways than usual, so that helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, chipping wasn't too bad, so it was like a, a couple of lucky putts. It's a lucky day. Overall, a good day. Yes, minus three. So it's great. I love it. Yes, no, it's a great feeling. Eh? Um, was an awesome day. The driver went straight to the, I think I missed four fairways and the chipping, the chipping freaking helped me a lot today like you saw in the last hole, that was, that's the old days chipping Into the Players' Championship Automatic Qualifier I just actually came out to win, uh, just to play the game um, I actually wanted to play on Sunday to see if I'm gonna do the qualification to go through to play just a real decent round but yeah today I definitely got me through definitely did get him through he rocked up to win which was a faux pas but he did win so um, Baz how was it what did you think of Blue Valley on the day yeah Blue Valley was a fantastic outing you know given that we are in between you know two seasons at the moment the course is really coming together nicely the greens uh, have sped up a fraction from last that I played. That was about two weeks ago. So yeah, it's all around, um, all around decent conditions, you know. And the scores can also show that there was a lot of opportunities there, you know. As I've always said, that Blue Valley is a summer's course, um, not entirely the best winter course. Um, primarily that it's so slopey and uh, a bit, a bit dry. But uh, yeah, just the weather conditions I think also picked up the last few holes. So. Well done to ground now to keep it uh, together, you know, coming in that last stretch of the last four holes, you know. So, yeah, I think uh, Blue Valley being part of the calendar next year, I guess, or... Yeah, no, surely. Definitely. There's only so many golf courses in Gauteng. We've got to make use of all of them if we want to have 33 different golf courses, I can tell you that much. But yes, the calendar is coming along nicely. We're about 70% 70 70 of the way through with the bookings, and I look forward to That's releasing it. Um, probably at the end of October, so we'll know exactly where we will be in the 2022 season. And Pick the wide courses, Maz, the wide, the wide golf course. course. Oh. <laughs> if only it was that easy, if only it was that easy. All right, Baz, while I've got you, take us through the pins on the day. Sure, and uh, we got Donny on the par 3 eighth, and uh, yeah, the par 3 twelfth, I, I snuck a little pin Yes, to the pin there, and Evald on the, what was it, the 17th or the... Th yeah, the, yes. over the water. Nearest in two for a concepts voucher. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Uh, must have been a hell of a shot because um, uh, the pin was in a tricky spot. It was like right on a slope. Um, I can tell you, I played with Josh Depp now, who decided, no, he's going over it, right? So he went over it. He was literally five meters short of the green and walked off with a six. Just shows you. If your short game is not on, unlike Grant, it can bite you. I honestly thought I hit a good one there. I was the first on that board. I actually mm. went for the green. Mm. And I, hit, uh, I managed to hit it in the bunker and hit a pretty good bunker shot. And uh, I was contemplating whether anybody was going to get inside. And you know what? Uh, well done to Eervolt in knocking it close there. Um, I don't know if Eervolt's watching, but Eervolt, if you are, tell us how you got there. Was it, did you lay up short and then hit it close? Uh, let us know, or if somebody who played with Eervolt, I think Billy played with him, so let us know. Billy, I see that you are watching. Group time. Let's see who won the featured groups on the day. On the featured groups, yeah, we have uh, Jamie Sherry that took out you, Maz, and Pranay, Eervolt, and Ronnie. And then on group B, we see we've got a Bobby there that took out Rudolf, Shandon, Peter, and Dorian on three under there, so I think that's pretty well done there. Very good. Um, Minus three is always a good score, and not winning on minus three 
It's a bit of a. It's a bit, it's of, a bit a of a tough. Yeah, it's a tough, tough, <laughs> tough pill to swallow. But there was somebody three shots better. Let's have a look at the teams. What happened in the teams? Well, red is now standing on eleven, and blue is now standing on thirteen. Why? Because the red team have won it. Six and a half points to three and a half points. Captain Billy Hall, uh, leading the way over his brother Henry Hall. Uh, contributors to Billy's team. Billy, he won his game. Uh, Gideon Richter won his game. Leon Wersteisen won his game. Donnie won his game. And then we go down to... Well, there's a tie between Jacques and Andre Kotzer. Moving down to Simon Mayer, winning his game. A bit of a tough day on the course for him. And then uh, Garfield Hendricks is the other winner for the red team. So well done to the red team for getting one back. And well done to the guys in the blue team who managed to win their point for their team. So, we will soon update you on what the actual standings are after Royal. I can tell you, it's interesting. That's for sure. So, where does it leave us in the Thursday series? Well, Simon Mayer has unfortunately dropped down to third after leading Series 1 for a very, very long time. Not too far back, only three points back. And Bobby Fanespay with his 300 takes it to 271 points. Fricky Bana moves up only two shots behind on 6, 269. Carl von Emelen moves down, not uh, a bit of a slump in form currently. 266 points. And then Richard Stewart moves up. I would say, what would we guess here, Ryan? With two rounds to go, who would you say is in contention to take it? How far is far out? Sure. Um, Mez, when it comes to this time of the year, it actually becomes really interesting because as you can see Simon had a bit of a slump on these one round there and he went from first to third so yeah I want to say it's actually close enough it could go any way with a I want to say between the top three maybe even Carl von Amelin but yeah I want to say I can't I can't predict it it just depends how these guys play yeah. but it's, it's actually nice to see how it boils out and the pressure the guys has to keep maintain towards the end and let me tell you, they're going to be playing together because the top 12 is back uh, for uh, October matches. So the pressure is back on. I got Billy Hall who came on and answered the question for me. Court and two thousand in. So he did lay up, <laughs> lay up, um, if that's what you want to call it on that par. Four and then in. So a great second shot by Evel. Thank you, Billy. So that is Blue Valley waxed and done. Another Thursday series. The next Thursday series is another golf estate at Eagle Canyon. And uh, many of us would have played there at the Challenge 500, so we know what to expect. This time only a bit different because you've only got 18 holes to be the champion. Right, then we move on to Royal East, which happened this Sunday past. Good day. Guys, the course was in good condition. Um, the greens were really, really good. Fast down the hills. Had to touch them. Baz, what did you make of the course? Um, uh... To be quite honest with you, I did enjoy this time around going around east. I had a bit of an equipment issue, so I had to do a few adjustments, compensate here and there for iron selections. And the wind was up, you know, so uh, Royal, Royal East is a bit of a test, you know, on a normal day. So I had a bit of a, a bad outing. I think I shot six over par. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's Royal's always a great test of golf, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite in the Gauteng area, especially in, 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 the, in their peak uh, conditions you know but the guys had a good time I saw there was a lot of um, a lot of under par and a lot of level par rounds you know so the guys I think the guys really tested themselves and uh, had a go at it uh, that's just to go backwards he says um, there we go I would say up to Richard now he's he's talking about the Thursday series standings Richard was what fifth so he reckons up to fifth position and Richard says I agree fat so I'm sure Richard will need a good round or two to get it back to maybe even the top two or three. Um, who won it, Royal? Well, we all know. Um, up there for most of the day and managed to keep it going. Uh, congratulations, Rudolf Bruderick. Um, first win as well. Um, starting on the 10th, 3.3-pointer, three three point 4-pointer. So already he's four under there and we were thinking, whoosh. This is going yeah. to be a low-scoring game. And then he, he stumbled on the, on the 13th, but then another four-pointer, three-pointer, and a final three-pointer with a par on the 18th to get to 22 points, four under after the first nine. Then, uh, as you can see, not many dropped points 
only the third and the fourth where he had a bit of a stumble, but he brought it back with three points on the fifth hole. And another par for him on eight to make four pars in the day. And then a very nervy, nervy six at the end because he was next to the green in two. I can tell you that much. And then where that pin location was on the ninth hole, if you're on this side and you hit a past, it's like literally off the green. So I walked past him oh, with camera in I hand and I said, Rudolph, it is fast. Don't hit it too hard. Uh, which he proceeded to hit too hard. And then he left himself a tester of a two putt coming back. Uh, I can, I could see him like this wanting to do it because there's nothing worse than losing it out after making a four putt. But congratulations to Rudolf. What does it mean for the top 10? Well, there we go. 800 rank uh, credits for him. Uh, 550 ranking points. Uh, Clint Britt is another good round making headway in series two. Um, Nicky Vallenhut tied third with Ronnie Wolherter and Sorrel Stain. That round from Ronnie Wolherter was really, really important when it comes to the standings going with the last two games to go. Hansi Hamann plus one. Uh, I never know how to say this. Roti Mankies, you played with him. Bears plus one. He was up there for a long time, and then you mentioned that yeah. he buckled a bit under the pressure. Fats, yeah, nice to see just... him also at tied six. A lot of tied sixes. What's that, Bears? Yeah, no, he just got a little tight. His swing got a bit shorter. And, you know, just lacked a little bit of rhythm, you know, coming in. But all around good game, you know, if he, if he had to come back to play a few of the Sunday leagues, I think he'll contend with the rest of the, the loyalty members. Very good. I think his handicap, he played over six, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, and that was obviously 80 percented because it was his first yes. time. So, Ryan, he might not be a six when he comes back after that round. I think he's going to be less. I think his duck handicap calculated is six, if I remember six. this afternoon. Yeah, so that might still be. Might still be. Well, we'd like to hear what the guys said after the round. I caught up with the top five, and this is what they had to say. <laughs> Hello. So Sorrel, you are minus one in the top five. How are you feeling? Very good. Uh, just chucked it away a little bit at, uh, on the last hole. Uh, my turnaround on the, on coming back happened on the stroke one. Uh, played a beautiful center fairway onto the green, tap in birdie. Made a three for five pointers. So that's where the round turned around. And uh, stepping onto the 18th, I saw I was minus two, tied for the lead. And then I just threw it away on the last hole of it. Tell you the truth, there was a lot of pressure on, on my game today. Um, I don't believe I've qualified for the major yet, so hopefully I'm close now. Um, Basil was starting to run away with season two, so um, I had to have a good round. So to be honest, there was a lot of pressure. I was actually preparing for this um, round for, for, for the week or so. Um, luckily, this is a beautiful course and um, the greens are always great. So if you can just get those greens and regulations, you, you have a fighting chance. But yeah, it's a good day. And like I said, hopefully I, I did enough to, to play Friday. Two rounds to go. Can you do it? It depends. I see Basil didn't have that great of a day today, which is surprising. And that's the thing is, um, neither one of us have a round that can fall out. So pressure, just pressure. And ooh, who's got another another good round in them? Um, I hope so. I hope I can give him a run. Currently the clubhouse leader. So that's my claim to fame. I had 18 points the first nine, 19 points the second nine. Some nice consistent golf. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm actually feeling well. It's actually I can't believe it. But yeah, I'm playing well today. So today was actually my best golf. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. I'm actually winning. But yeah, I'm happy. Beating 76 other players. Um, tell me, what was the best part of your game today? Well, um, my drives were actually straight on. There were a few that I actually missed. Um, but yeah, I just talked to my wife and she said, no, keep calm, play your normal game. 
and then I just started playing technical again and start playing my game and start playing on my handicap. So actually, I came in today and I said to the guys, I need to qualify, um, and yeah, I qualified. I'm actually yeah, I'm happy. Qualified indeed, and he will be teeing it up this Friday at Serengeti. We've got Shark who says, "Great win, well done." And then um, Moneo Kelly uh, enjoyed Royal and made my PB playing in Duck of Twenties. What is your PB? Let us know, Monet, uh, what that is. And then uh, Rudolph came on to say, I was shaking like a leaf. <laughs> yes, Rudolph. <laughs> I, I think shaking. he was. <laughs> I was shaking like a leaf. Um, talking about four putts, to try and avoid four putts, let me just put this. Robert Michael can tell you about losing on a four putt. Should we dive into it? Eagle Canyon needed three putts to win, made four. Boo. Unfortunately, <laughs> but at least he won eventually at uh, Germiston last season to yes. finish it up. Uh, Ryan, tell me, is Rudolph's handicap going to come down from a 30 after this? I really hope so. Um, he's actually at the moment <laughs> capped at 30. So, yeah, he is in a, seems to be in a little bit of a good form now. Rudolph, please keep it up so we can bring that handicap down. But okay. I think him himself, he wants to get his handicap down because he's like in a good form now, as anybody would. But, yeah, hopefully it'll start coming down. <laughs> I think I'm right in saying that uh, Rudolf said it was also a personal best. So guys are really practicing hard and a lot of personal bests coming, which is also really good to see. Uh, let's go to the pins, Baz. Here we go. Yeah, so we've got uh, the par three second going to Ryan Esmond. Uh, that is a pretty good uh, prize there on that hole. That hole's so tough. And we've got Nicky Smuts. Uh, Smuts at par four seventh. We've got a concept voucher for you. Hope to go and get your, your equipment seen to. And Mr. Billy Hall. Looking forward to you seeing it in the gym. In the gym. There we go. And um, uh, Drinking many, many Tao energy drinks. Uh, the groups. There's three groups. A, B, and C. Yeah, in group A, uh, Sorrel took that one. He's actually seemed to be getting a little bit of a good form there. Um, it's good to see him play well. He took it over Corpus Kuman, Caro, and Neville. And then group B, uh, Matthew Whittle took it over Donna, John, and myself. And then Group C, uh, Maz, I just can't see the names there. There you go. <laughs> there we go. So Monet took it over Hanu, Chad, and JP. And went on plus four there. So yeah, it seems like Sorrel did quite a good one there. But yeah, that's the groups that we have there. Um, Sorrel did, if you did not hear, make a bit of a blunder on his final hole because uh, he simply needed to make a six and I think he could have taken it. But yeah. again, short game, boys. Doesn't help short bashing game. everything. You've got to practice a short game. Um, Rudolf comes on and says, uh, it was my PB, 99. So welcome to the Less Than 100 Club. Um, hopefully you... What generally happens here, Baz, is they go break 90, or oh, break 100, and then the next time is 95, and then 92, and then he's into the 80s. And um, the quicker you do that, the more you win without Us. before the handicap coming down. Yeah, I still think guys that want to break 100, you know, from 190, 80, just work on your short game. You know, it's oh, your short game. Just if you can implement a, a basic short game and, and good technique, your focus will improve on your long game because you're focusing on strike exactly where to hit the ball. You know, just initiate a good short game because that will just um, rub off into your long game rather than just try and hit it as far as possible and and you know just try and find some distance distance is not everything you know those kinds of handicaps you want to stop the four putts robert michael mm -hmm. it's actually true that because i was having a chat to grant um at now royal about his win at blue valley and he was saying he had a lesson with his putting and chipping and he says thanks to that he was able to even read his lines f for chipping and be able to tip it, get it quite close, and then just have the little short putts in. So yeah, that definitely does make a difference. I must agree with Basil there. Because if you if you just put uh, calculation wise, if you shooting a hundred, you are putting fifty times or forty five times. Yeah. Because yeah. you should be hitting equivalent of forty three to forty six shots. Yeah. Or maybe forty eight, max fifty. Mm. You know. So just to put things into perspective, you hitting more. Uh, the same amount of putts than shots. Um, do I hear you um, hinting at a bit of a basil clinic on chipping? I know <laughs> you helped me out at one point, and it really does help. Small little changes 
just helps you control it so much better. Yeah, I know if, if, if uh, anybody lacks a bit of chipping confidence, you know where to find me. And uh, yeah, we just work on it. It's just, it's pretty much just basics and working on contact. Things that, for, uh, that golfers forget because we will go through a thing and then there's that one little thing you forget and then you forget it for like two or three rounds and then you're like, oh, how did I not know this? This is so exactly. simple. Yeah, we all feel the pain. Let's move on to the teams. There we go. 12, 13, gentlemen. The red team have pulled two back. Uh, five and a half to four and a half. Peter van Veek, captain, takes the victory for his team. Unfortunately, not the victory over Donny Geldenace. Um So, plus 11, unfortunately, is pipped by plus three. So, Donny, well done there. Uh, let's go through the winners uh, for the red team. Uh, I'm still going down. Uh, Clint Bird is minus two. Nicky Van Hood minus one. Then a tight, tight game there. Robert Michael plus 15 and plus 16 for David Sinclair. Thank goodness they were not in the same four ball. A half for Carl mm. and uh, Aldo Lucky um, plus 13. Heinrich plus 17. How did they win their team game with a plus 17? <laughs> May word. Um, Ryan Esmond plus 7 taking uh, Shaul Ferreira. Uh, Karuna and Grantnell also struggling. So Grantnell back to earth. The plus 11, right as the golfing gods would have it. Standings, Ryan. Basil, you have given away a lot of shots. As Ronnie was saying, he's moved up into second. Well, no, he's now three shots behind you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a bit unfortunate that I've gone through this equipment change. But uh, oh, Ronnie Volert is such a great guy. You know what? We're going to take it down to the wire and... Uh, Best of luck for those who are kind of uh, there and there about. But as far as I can see, it looks like it's a two and a half uh, horse race. Nicky Vallengood, very good to see his consistencies. And uh, yeah, um, kind of congratulations to the top five in making the shootout teams. And for the from sixth to tenth, you guys need to keep it up and yep. hope to see you guys at Ive Africa. They, they will be in there. But whether they stay in the top 10 is the question. Ryan, you want to add anything to this? No, no, not really. It's just uh, I've got the same comment as, as before. This time of the year, or the getting closer to the end of the season, it shows you how one game can make a difference. Basil was now unfortunate with his equipment change and that. And look how close he's now made it with between him and Ronnie now. So, yeah, it, it actually, this is the exciting part. I love this part of the season every season. Season. It's almost there. It's two rounds to go. So that is Series 2 done and dusted for September. So September, there's one round left, and that is the players. Before we move on to the players, there's been singles and team match play matches that has been happening. Um, let's have a look at the singles at this stage. We into Many guys are into the quarterfinals. Um, we've got a case of Kunrod and Graham needing to play their round of 16 in York. Jacobs and Robert Michael there on but we will be adding these games to the field so that we can whittle them down I'm sure Leon and Flicky will be playing at Ibotzi against each other I'm sure Ruben and Carl will be playing at Ibotzi and then we need to get the others going uh, let's move on to the team stage um, we're all into the quarterfinals we're waiting for the Spaldings and the Gamblers boys if you don't play before Ibotzi you're out I said it right here well let me just come out if you don't play before Ibotzi, you're out. Both of you, gone. Because um, this was August and now we're into October and there's still no game played. So unfortunately, um, you need to get this game done and you don't have a lot of time. Uh, long shots take on the shit shots in the quarterfinals. Sultan of Swing take on the Butties. The Butties beating uh, Sultan of Swing. Sorry, I made a mistake. There. The, the, the Butties beating Sultan of Swing at Royal. So they go through two and one. Um, and then Bogey Bunch beating Double J's 4-3 and three to go through the quarterfinals. And you had your game, Baz, on Thursday against No Clue Men. How did that go? Yeah, that's, uh, it was a pretty up and down round for the both of us. As you know, the conditions were playing a toll on us. And uh, we got off to a decent start in the beginning. And uh, the plus strokes that I eventually gave to the guys, the guys utilized one or two of the extra shots, but... We managed to get uh, two up after 16, so we were dormy, dormy up, and uh, we kind of let off a little bit as we, as Gideon Richter actually told us, no, 
you know, if we win the 17, 18, you guys will win on the stroke play. So Ruben and I kind of started fiddling a little bit at the at the end of the round. But um, needless to say that we we came into the clubhouse and we we're like, oh, we should have just won because we were not 100 percent sure yeah, about that stroke one rule. Yeah. So, but it was old. a fantastic outing. You know, Tim Garner and Gideon are really, you know, they're really good golfers, uh, single uh, figure handicappers, and they are highly competitive. You know, so. I had to make a few eagles to win the hole by one point, <laughs> and uh, Ruben's short game uh, kept things together, you know. So we dovetailed pretty well. It was a great outing. Yeah, Tim comes on and says, whatever, Brew, we taught you a lesson on the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only hole that Tim could o eventually open his shoulders. Ah, all right. Um, yes, we spoke to a few guys at Royal. Very nice comments from them about their wins in the match play competitions. First nine went quite well. Uh, we turned on on three up, um, but yeah, they they brought, brought us down to earth on the first few holes of the second nine. When my goal fell down, this guy came to the rescue. <laughs> Confidence going into the rest of the tournament. Do you think you can take it? We always back ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think there was some good dovetailing today as yeah. well, and uh, yeah. We're looking forward to the to the rest of the, the knockout stages. It wasn't uh, my best, but I was I was happy with a lot of ball striking. I went up very early. Um, Fricky didn't really have a sniff, if I could say it like that, but uh, he did win cu a couple of holes. Um, could have won it about four holes from the end there, but uh, just yeah, he played some good golf on the on the last four holes. Um, but I eventually got through there, so I'm very happy. How did your singles against Billy go? What was the score? Um, yeah, I, I took him one up on the last hole here on the 18th. Um, we halved the 18 6 edge. Um, but yeah, it was a, a tight, tight match. Um, I must say, Billy is quite a gladiator if it comes to singles uh, match play golf. But yeah, I'm chuffed. Looking forward to the next one, which is Fricky apparently. So yeah, um, hopefully I can be another giant killer. A good day. Uh, we won four and three. Um, we were six up at one uh, at one stage. My partner's putter was very very hot, and um, yeah, we I think we, we we tagged him very well. Game came together the first nine. Unfortunately, I had a nice little poor belly at halfway, so uh, they took two back ten and eleven, uh, and then we sort of took it through to the end, and then I think it was the sixteenth. Eh? Yeah. yeah, 16th, I think we then closed it up. Whenever we play team matches, we lift our games. I mean, we enjoy the, the competitiveness of, about it. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we ask for a better partner. And, yeah, we're going to the finals. So, look out, guys. The result wasn't that great, you know, in the scoring. But, uh, yeah, in the end, 1-2-1. Uh, and one. Uh, I think I played plus 7 on the handicap. But, uh, yeah, it was a good day. Forty-four players are licking their lips to get to Serengeti on Friday. Another fantastic golf course that we have the pleasure of playing. It is the public holiday, so they've done us a great favor by letting us take a lot of their PM field. Um, it's going to be fantastic. I, I want to know on the chat line who in the field, which we'll go through now, has not played Serengeti yet. Ryan, I know you keep missing out. You were saying every time there's a qualification for Serengeti, which is usually the Masters, um, you miss out. Yeah. I miss out every time. <laughs> so I've never been to Serengeti. Shame man. You're missing out. Baz, you're playing there tomorrow. Practice round much? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> well, it kind of is a practice round, but I'm playing the professional bushfire tour there. Okay. Um, just decided to actually just sneak a little practice round in there while making some cash. So really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, it's my birthday on the Friday. So I'm going to go in very, very social. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a very oily breakfast, as I do know my playing peers <laughs> will uh, try and attack me from all angles. So it's going to be a blast. I'm either going to win it or come last. So either or. I asked the question, who has played there? Um, oh, there's so many comments coming through. It keeps jumping. Who's who's not played there? Well, Rudolph, that's the first time for you. Kero, haven't played soon. Yeti, you're going to enjoy it. Um, Leon von Ada also. Is a first time at Serengeti. Uh, Edwin, sure, there's plenty. Not been plenty to, first time. Not 
B nice. to Serengeti wow. yet. Uh, even Jacques, Jacques, what's happening? I'm sure you would have played there already. First time for me. Surprised. Um, uh, Sepp is upset that he's, he's unable to play. Um, Peter Zak, I'm sure, has played many majors. Uh, he's played Serengeti before. And then finally, Maz is going to give away his two year championship. Co yeah, yes, yes, yes. Finally. Finally. <laughs> COVID. We didn't have this tournament last year, so I just kept the cup and kept uh, playing majors. Uh, what can you do? Oh, so at least you and Shane Lowry have something in common. What's that? He's held the claret jug for two years. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, well, esteemed company, I guess. Uh, let's <laughs> have a look at the honors board for the Players' Championship. Well, this is what it looks like We're going down. Uh, myself, Royal East. 20, uh, 2019, 2018 was Dean Sherman at Pekinwood. Then 2017, Wayne Jensen at Royal East. 2016, Albert Weichelt at Pekinwood. Uh, 20, uh, 2015, Liedem Versalina, Royal Joburg West. And then the very first one, which which became the Masters, was uh, Rudolf von der Berg in 2014. And I actually think he won it on like plus three or four on that day. Because Serengeti can bite you. It's wide open, and we're going to discuss this. It's wide open, but uh, yeah, it can bite you if you're not good around the greens, which we were, which we have been alluding to. Let's have a look at the qualifiers. So, congratulations to the Thursday series qualifier. Simon Mayer, as the Thursday series champion, is an automatic spot. Richard Stewart, winning the 2021 Challenge 500, gets his entry. The winners for the leagues is Grant Nell, Blue Valley, he's in. Luke Janssen, Royal West, is in. Ruben's in. Kero O'Connell's in. Bobby von Spey with a good finish at Blue Valley, gets himself into the major. Jamie Sherry, steady as always. Ryan Esmond is there with a good finish at Blue Valley. Paul Vickery had a good finish at Royal West, which got him in. Garfield Hendricks, steady. Paul Ricketts, nice to see you in the field. Gerard Maritz and Russell Tandy. So that is the Thursday Series qualifiers. Let's move through to Series 1. Donny Geldenes as Series 1 champion. Ricky Barnard as the 2020 Player of the Season. Billy Hall, 2020 Summer Cup champion. Um, Edwin Porchida, one of Then Leon Oesthuizen. He's... Uh, uh, a couple of good... Where did he finish so well? Uh, uh, Centurion. He had a good finish. Graham de Villiers finishing second at Centurion. Brings him into the field. Peter Zaccario. Barry, Ra uh, Barry Fenter. Dana Peramal. Leon von Arder. Good to have you. Uh, first time for Alistair O'Tim. Courtesy of a good finish at Centurion. Uh, Adam Ford. Peter Prinsler. And Jan Fenter. Right. Now, let's move into Series 2 qualifiers. Randall Chetty as Series 2 champion. Aldo Ferri as a 2021 Masters champion. Myself as the Open champion. So, I'm not really counting it as defending my players. Uh, Rudolf Brodovic, uh winner currently. Uh, Peter van Veek at State Mines. And Jacques Gramstein at Danefern Automatic Entries. Jaku Jakobs, uh, Gerald Gerber, Ronnie Waller, to Basil Wright, there you are, Josh Detnow, Lick, uh, Vickers Lee, Neville Kurz, and Carl van der Linde. Please, gentlemen, these guys that are silhouettes, I need to take some pictures of you so that we can actually um, make it even prettier. Um, yeah. The field. We start at 11.40. This is how it's broken down. There's four four balls going on the first tee. And their rest will go on the 10th tee from 11.40 to 12.28, which is nice because 12.28 means that we will be finished by 4.30 or so, closer to 5, and we will, as normal, have our major uh, proceedings, which I'll go through now. But I am off at 11.40 because I suck and I didn't hardly scored any points, so thank goodness for automatic qualification. So I'm going off first and I'll meet everybody afterwards. I'm with Vickers Lee, Carl von Linde, and Shandon Schaefer. Um, I could go through everybody, but I'm not going to. Ryan will soon give us handicaps so that we know, probably tomorrow, and everybody will yes. know what they are playing off. As we can see that Luki Janssen, Grant Nell, Rudolf Brodovic, and Dani Geldenes are the most ranking points earners over the three months qualifying period. So they will come in because they're supposed to, supposed, supposed to, be the form players and usually it comes in the the form of one of the last two four balls where the winner comes out of basil birthday golf i hope you have a great birthday presence it'd be nice to have a major to your name be nice i'm sorry say again miss what was that it would be nice birthday present to get a major to your name 
and the cup is yeah, massive. No, it's, let's just first get the first duck hook win, and then we'll talk about majors. But yes, if I do end up uh, winning on my birthday, I think uh, I'll remember it. Uh, it'll go down with with many of my victories uh, in this game as the most important victory, Maz. It's a lesser field, and it's metal, so we don't expect the pro to shoot eights and nines so, and tens. So, Ryan, is there any chance I could play off a scratch for my birthday? Yeah, and I was just about to comment on Barry's comment there where he said 18 handicap for me, please. I was going to say, anybody that asks for these handicaps, the amount of shots you're asking for higher, I think I'll subtract from your actual handicap. So, How's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think I, like that. I think it's fair. I was complaining that I was a bit too low, but now things are back to normal because my best three of six has kind of sorted itself out because you have two or three good rounds and it smashes your duck or cap. I'm sure many of you will know. Um, let's have, I spoke to Barrent, uh, the golf assistant director at Serengeti, and this is what he has to say. Hi there everyone, I'm Barrent Kruitzer. I'm here at Serengeti Golf Club. I'm an assistant golf director and also part of the lifestyle on the estate. It's going to be absolutely superb. We're putting a whole lot of fertilizer down next week. Um, when you guys get here, it's going to be absolutely great. It's going to be lush. Uh, the greens are running already at 10 and a half, um, so we're expecting them to run more or less the same speed you guys get here. We read it, uh, the greenside bunkers, so you guys are in for a treat. Find the fairways and find the greens. Uh, if you miss the greens, you're going to get punished. Um, but yeah, I'd say fairways, greens, uh, I think you're in for a treat. I'd say uh, probably a 38, 39 is definitely a good score to win around here. Yeah? Uh, it's definitely not of the uh, easiest uh, golf courses around. Um, we've got a lot more bunkers than trees. So yeah, um, I definitely think you, you to 39 should win it. From the horse's mouth that the course should be in excellent, excellent condition. All right, while I put the scorecard up and the layout, we are going to discuss, or mainly Basil is going to discuss, how to get around Serengeti. Uh, we don't have too much time because we still got to do the fats first mass team yes. draw, which won't take too long. Um, Basil, how do we do this? All I can say, it's wide open. So if you're having a bad driving day, you should still kind of hit a fairway. Um, yeah, Mass to be frank with you guys, a lot of sunblock, a shovel, and a spade. And <laughs> because you're going to be building a lot of castles, guys. If you in those bunkers, you're not coming out. So take advantage of the, the wide fairways. You know, the par fives are relatively long, so... If you can just make your pars there, you guys will do well. You make birdies there, you guys are two shots on the field. Mm -hmm. And yeah, guys, there's not a lot of trees. It's just open spaces. And as you can see, the start on 1, 2, 10, and 11 are relatively easy holes. So you guys need to try and take full advantage of the start, whether it's the front or the back nine. And then if you can see that the golf course actually does get tougher from 6, 7, 8, 9, and 15, 16, 17, and 18. So your guy's stamina has to come in from both ends, you know. So once you turn off the nine, if you can turn maybe one over, one under, you guys will be in for a decent score and possibly the trophy. Um, let's talk about the greens. They are, many of them are raised and do fall off the sides. So there is occasions where if you don't get it up, it could come back to you. So the biggest, the biggest thing about Serengeti's greens is the wind. Now people don't understand when, that, when, when we talk about breeze with putting, when you play open golf courses like that, you need to look where the wind is blowing too. So it's an extra element just based on, especially because they're going to be fast. I think they're 10 and a half, 11 he said. So if there's a little breeze, you guys have to take that into consideration because most of those greens are elevated. And also bear in mind that we will be playing in the afternoon, so they are going to be dried up a little bit. Mm. So your chipping them. actions, guys, try and try uh, implement uh, one or two bump and run shots, uh, not necessarily pitching them at the hole with your lob wedge for those who have uh, good short games. But yeah, just go and have some fun. It is a medal round of golf. So yeah, just play the most stock shots that you have in the bag. Try not get too cute because the golf course is wide. And yes, guys, if you miss the fairways, you're going to get punished. Mm. Can't miss the fairways. Can't. They're just, they're wider than Eye of Africa and a little less intimidating than Eye of Africa. So, yeah, it's, there's a lot to think about. But first of all, just hit the ball where it's green. Simple as that. And just uh, make sure that on the putting green that 
There's no wind that can affect your ball. Because if it's a left to right putt and the breeze is off the right, it's not that left to right anymore, if mm. that's a small example. So yep. just bear in mind for that. I promise you that is a massive factor at Serengeti. Um, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, I hope you're not leading when you get to the ninth hole. That par three breaks me every single time. Because it usually plays about 180 meters. It's got water and out of bounds on the left. And um, it's not an easy green to hit. So if you're going to be finishing on the ninth, please take, well, you've, you've, if you're leading, you've got the eighth, which is the island green, which breaks many people. We've seen so many high scores there. And it's really not that difficult. But once you've got 100 out or 60, 70 out, and you, you have to hit the island green, you start shaking. Because you know if you go in, you've got to go again. And if you go in, you gotta go again. If you go in, so the biggest, you gotta go again. The biggest Sorry, thing I'm about repeat, eight that is it. The biggest thing about eight on that third shot, your layup, is take extra club. If it's hundred and five played one fifteen, because the depth perception already mm. puts you on a deceleration swing. Mm. So given the, your conditions, just take extra club because there's always a more green long when there's a massive lake short of the green. And then on the ninth hole, it's actually such an easy hole, Maz. You don't even have to just play it up the right because 80% of the of, of, of everybody that's playing strokes on that hole. Yeah. So if you can just hit an, a nice one up the right, if it does draw off the bunker onto the green, then bonus. But nothing wrong with a little chip and a putt, you know. So, yeah. Thank Best you. Best of luck, Mazzo. All right. Thank you. Um, some major... Um, T's and C's, right? We know it's metal. Uh, get there early because it's a great facility. The driving range is there for us. You get some balls to hit. They've got a great uh, practice uh, chipping area, bunk Very area, good. big green. Uh, it's really, really a nice vibe. So um, enjoy it. You know, it's a good day out of golf. Afterwards, we will be gathering. There's a, a, a portion that they have secluded for us. We'll be gathering um, to do a bit of a fine session and hand over the trophy to the new champion. Always good fun. Right, that is that. Guess what time it is. The countdown to the sixth edition of the Ducker Classic has begun. Highland Gate is once again the home of the Classic for the ultimate test of golf. A record field will battle it out over three days and 54 holes where every shot counts. Three days of medal golf, and camaraderie. Who has the grit to be the best? Who will conquer? It's the 2021 Ducker Classic at Highland Gate. Who will conquer indeed? And who will conquer the fat versus Maz? We've had this uh, for the last two years running and it's very, very interesting. It runs over the three days if you don't know how it works. This is what happened last year at the Classic the scores so what happens is we add up the scores for each of the players we've got much more so these points will be beaten um, this year around uh, as you can see day one fastest team smashed me my team day two uh, again and then day three we pulled it back when um, it really really mattered but unfortunately we we're 88 points short so we have lots to do if you are in team Maz to get bragging rights really bragging rights um fats i know is watching i don't know if he's still watching but he was watching and uh this is the teams and so how this worked is the two of us got together on whatsapp we had the list uh we chose our vice captains and then we just pretty much went he got the first pick because he was uh, the reigning champion and we pretty much went through the list and chose uh who we would like in our team if obviously the player that was chosen by the other captain then we try to match them because um, we're trying to also get handicaps in our favor to say so are we ready for team fats drum roll please anyone yes no da -da 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 -da. here we go team fats team fats for this year vice captain is paul ricketts joining paul ricketts uh, this is largely in alphabetical order uh Alderfrey, barry fenter billy hall carl van der Mullen, charlie rothman Donnie Geldenace, Donna Peramel, Edwin Porthitter, Ewald van Wijk, Godfrey Watermeyer, uh, is Godfrey from Durban? I'm not too sure. Uh, Graham de Villiers, Hanno Oestesen, Hans Jermann, Henry Hall, Jaku Jacobs, Jan Venter, Kevin Ho, Monet O'Kelly, 
uh, Nikki Vallenhut, Paul Vickery, Pete Skitter, Ryan Esmond, Russell Tandy, Santosh uh, <coughs> Bolshund, which I know plays in the Durban League, and Grant Nell, who is a late entry. So that is Team Fats. So, um, yes, hashtag Team Fats if you think Fats is going to take it. But we have my team, and my team is not bad at all. This is who we have. So welcome to Team Maz. It's Leon Oestes and is my vice captain, the reigning classic champion. Oh, nice. Uh, Andrew Godfrey from Durban. Bobby van Espey, good form going into the classic, so I'll take him. Uh, Fricky Barnard, always good to have on your team. A good hard fighter, Fricky Stein, first classic for him. Heinrich Boert is also first classic for him. Gerard Maritz, you're with me, Gerard. Jack Lamp from Durban. Jacques Gravenstein, you're with me, Jacques. I'm counting on you. JP Atwood, getting a new driver. So go hit that driver before you go on tour, please, because you can't really miss there. Uh, Karina Kuni, Kero O'Connell, Corbus Schumann, Louis Gerber. Mitchell de Sassan, Nick Quintel, Peter de Klerk, Peter Prince-Lewer, Randall Chetty, Ryan Jensen, you're in my team. Um, Yay. Richard Holman, Ronnie Wolhutter, Tim Garner is with me, Trevor is with me, and Basil. People will be wondering, Basil's name is there. What does that mean? Well, that means that Basil is potentially coming on tour with us. Are you excited, Basil? Got a point to prove. So there are the teams. Um, congratulations um, for whichever team you are playing for. Lots to look forward to. I got them both. I got them both. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, you got us both. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Especially now that I know the golf course. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan, seeing as you're on Maz team, just to ensure that I at least play for plus one or a plus two. So now possible. we can talk. Now plus, we can talk. You're yeah. on the same team. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so those, those teams will be posted on our classic group and then the banter will start. Um, there is going to be a classic show next Friday, everybody. Next Friday is the classic show. Yay. So join in. Uh, we'll have the first day tee off times. We'll have all the pins. We'll have everything that we need to talk about so that we can prepare for the round. Okay? Um, that's it. So the last thing I have to say is thank you for watching, everybody. And join us tomorrow for the Ryder Cup show. Um, Basil's been working very, very hard and studying very, very hard to get all the information that he needs out to you. Okay, boys. Um, there's some comments I'll quickly get to. I made a team. Well done, you made a team. Um, whose team is he in? <laughs> I can't remember. Bad, bad, So bad. many names. <laughs> so many names. I was just reading. I felt like one of those uh, guys who read lists. Uh, team Maz, Leon Oesters, and thank you, um, uh, Vice Captain. Uh, Gerard Maritz, Team Maz, first time. I think, you see, I have the controls. I'm just going to put up Team Maz of all the Ikes. Uh, okay, no, there we go, now. you see. <laughs> Ignore Team Fats there now. <laughs> oh, there we go. Here's another Team uh, team Mares. Uh, Jacques. Yes, please. Um, uh, okay, let's not be bad. Let's not be bad. There was a couple of hashtag uh, Team Fats. Hey, you're my team. Oh, that's old. Sorry. Um, Francois. Team Fats will be trending soon. That's it from us. Um, uh, checking, checking, checking. Great show. Thank you for watching. Team Mares for the win. Fricky Bono, Team Maz for the winner. Great. That's it. Thank you for your time. We will see you tomorrow. I'm pushing the button, which will be the logo. Great. Cheers. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Basil. Cheers, boys.